Hi folks, this is College Algebra Checkpoint Quiz 1.4. In number one, we're given the graphs of two relations, and we're asked to determine whether or not it represents y as a function of x. If it does represent a function, then we're asked to find the domain and range. So the principal tool we have to check the function condition graphically is a vertical line test, which we have here, theorem 1.1. A set of points in the plane represents y as a function of x if and only if no two points lie on the same vertical line. So another way to say this is that if you can find a vertical line that crosses the graph more than once, it does not represent y as a function of x. So if we look at our uh, two relations we have here, it's fairly easy in the first relation to find a vertical line. Here's one x equals negative 3, that crosses the graph more than once. So for these two points, they have the same x-coordinate, namely negative 3, but they have two different y-coordinates. So this does not represent y as a function of x, or we would say this is not a function. In part b, no matter what vertical line I pick, it's going to cross the, it's going to cross the graph at most once. Okay. So this does represent y as a function of x. So y is a function of x. And so then we can go ahead and find its domain and range. Now remember the definition of domain is the set of all the x coordinates. So I have to imagine uh, if I listed out these points, uh, which x values are going to be represented there. So the way you can do that geometrically is imagine projecting this graph down to the x-axis. Uh, so we smash the graph down to the x-axis. Now this arrow here, remember, means that this keeps going off in this direction forever and ever and ever. So when I project this part of the graph down to the x-axis, I'm going to cover everything up to, but not including, the negative 1. So one part of my domain is going to be this interval which in interval notation is negative infinity to negative 1 with a parenthesis because I'm not including the negative 1. If I project this down to the x-axis and project this up to the x-axis, I'm going to get everything from 1 on to infinity, including the 1. So the other chunk of the domain is going to be 1 to infinity. To deal with the range, I'm going to be projecting the graph to the y-axis. So if I imagine taking this and projecting it to the y-axis, I'm going to get all these y-values down to, but not including, y equals 2. So one part of my, <clears throat> one part of my range is going to be from 2 to infinity. If I take this part, and project it over to the y-axis. I'm going to get everything from negative infinity, because this keeps going down forever and ever, up to this point here, which goes to the y-axis at 1. So, I would write the range as negative infinity to 1, including 1, union, parenthesis 2, off to infinity. So that'll do it for number one. Okay, number two, we're asked if this equation describes y as a function of x. And so we go back to the definition of function. For each x, do I get one and only one y? So the way we're going to handle this is we're going to solve this equation for y. I have a y squared I can factor out, which is in common to both terms. I'm left with 1 minus x. Then I divide both sides by 1 minus x. To solve for y, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I get y equals plus or minus the square root of 1 over 1 minus x, which if you want, you can simplify this to plus or minus the square root of 1, which is 1, divided by the square root of 1 minus x. 
Now, if I plug in a particular x value, which uh, makes everything happy here, for example, if I plug in x equals 0, what do I get out for y? I get plus or minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus 0, which simplifies to plus or minus 1. So for this x value, I'm getting two different y values, which means this does not describe y as a function of x. So no, for x equals 0, we get two different y values. Something you can do in the privacy of your own home is to actually graph these equations in the calculator like we talked about earlier and see that this in fact will violate the vertical line test. So it's a way to kind of put all these concepts together. Regardless, that's it for number two and that'll do it for Checkpoint Quiz 1.4.